8.3, the sun powers Earth's climate system. So the sun's energy, as you can see right here, is always bombarding the Earth. One of two things can happen. It can either be reflected by the Earth or absorbed by different parts. So the balance of Earth's energy. So as you can read here, radiation incoming can, uh, can do a couple of things. The radiation gets absorbed. It then gets transmitted. It may also be reflected as well. So like I just said, 30%, uh, I wouldn't say it, but 30% of energy incoming, the 100% incoming gets reflected. And there are the, there's the breakdown of the 30%. And then the uh, clouds are absorbing 19 and the land and water is absorbing 51 to make a 70%. So this 30 and 70 are kind of key numbers that you uh, should remember for this section. So latitude and climate zones. We, uh, we saw a little bit of this already in a previous section. So when you're at the equator, direct sunlight's coming in. So your climate here should be nice and warm because of the direct sunlight. And when you're up at the poles, you're getting indirect sunlight. You can see the sunlight spreading out. That's the red part there. And so that's why those areas are a little bit colder in terms of climates. 8.4 components of Earth's climate system. So uh, the climate system, there's actually four parts that we consider to make up uh, all the different uh, areas of Earth that have life and, and water and particles, and things like that. So we've got the atmosphere, that's where our gases are. Hydrosphere is where the water is. Lithosphere is the Earth. And then living things fall into the biosphere. So let's take a closer look at some of these. So the first one on our list is the atmosphere. All the gases that push down upon you, us make up the atmosphere. So we've got 78% nitrogen, only 21% oxygen. People always think it's maybe the reverse. And then 1% other stuff. And water vapor varies depending on where you are. So the, uh, the atmosphere itself has four different layers. We've got the thermosphere right at the top, right next to space, mesosphere. Your stratosphere that contains the ozone layer. Ozone is a molecule that's made up of three oxygens, so it's O3. And we also have the troposphere that is closest to the Earth's surface. Now looking at the hydrosphere here, uh, it's essentially all parts that contain water, so your water cycle. And really the, the two main parts of this are you've got uh, precipitation. Sorry, not precipitation. I mean, that is an important part, but condensation and evaporation are kind of cycling here. So water evaporates, it condenses, and then it rains back in the form of precipitation. So there's really a nutshell, your water cycle. We've got the lithosphere, which is essentially the Earth's crust, solid rock, soil, and minerals on land, and extends under the ocean as well. So that's why we've got our continental crust and our oceanic crusts. So that's your lithosphere, the dirt. And lastly, the biosphere is where you find the living things. They're producing carbon dioxide. We have a, a cycle here that you may remember from previous courses called the carbon cycle. A few other cycles too, but uh, yeah, that's your living 